Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this Photoshop Elements Effects video, we'll be looking at how to do this color splash effect down here. Now there are two ways of doing this. One is to work from a black and white image and apply color to the black and white image. The other way is to work from a color image and then only keep part of the color and convert the rest of the image into black and white. We'll take a look at both versions in here, both ways of doing this. We're starting off with a full color image as you can see here. And let's make a copy of this. This is my background. So make a copy of the background just like that. There's my background copy and we'll hide that. I always like to do this to give myself a safety just in case I mess things up. I can always go back to my original image here right inside the file without having to find anything else. So that's always a, a good habit to be in. Both of these techniques, the color technique and the black and white technique, they both rely on having a selection made for the flower. So, or whatever it is you want to have in color, in this case, you know, the flower. So, Let's start with zooming in and creating a selection around this flower. I'll use the polygonal lasso tool and the settings for that, anti-aliasing to smooth the edges out and no feathering and we want to have that on new selection right there. Okay, now it's just a matter of just starting in and beginning to make your selection. Now I'll be going fairly quickly on this just for this video. Normally I would take more time and be a little more careful about this selection. Now one thing about making selections with this polygonal lasso tool, if you click too quickly one after another it's going to collapse the, the selection down to just what you have clicked at that point. So make sure that you don't click too fast. If you do, you're going to have to either start over again or add something back into the collection. In this case, I'm just taking my time and clicking around everything in here that is red. And we'll keep just the red part. We'll have to remove a little bit in the middle. So a little bit in there that is green over to the right of where I'm working right now. But that's fairly easy to remove something once you have put in the basic selection. And it's just a matter, as you can see here, just going carefully around this. Now if this were a black and white image, I'd be doing the exact same thing to select out what I want to convert into color. So the selection is the same whether this is in black and white or it's in color doesn't doesn't make any difference and I'll be doing the color demo or the black and white demonstration rather from the color image we'll just convert the image to black and white and then I'll work from that point and again just a matter of just going around and making your selection now you can use any selection tool you want to use I just happen to like the polygonal lasso tool if you prefer using a different tool that's fine as long as you can make a controlled selection then the tool will work out well for you. The only tool I really don't like inside of Photoshop is the magnetic lasso that tries to follow along an edge. I found more often than not it doesn't do a very good job on following the edge. It's just better to go ahead and use this tool then instead of going back and trying to fix areas that the magnetic lasso tool didn't manage to get correctly. 
Okay, like this is going pretty quickly as you can see here. We're almost up to the top. Again, I'm, I'm not being as careful as I normally would be on this kind of a, a selection. I just don't want to have you sit here watching me make this selection all day. That'd be kind of dull and boring. So, going quickly, and let's just go ahead and finish this off up here at the very end. Then we'll go back and we'll remove a couple of spots that are in a different color from the red. We don't want to have just the red in here. Now you don't have to go for just the red. There's our selection. You could do, do multicolor since we're going to be getting rid of everything else, but it looks better if you're using just that one color. So let's now go and change the tool over here to the subtract from selection tool. And I'll use this just to remove a few of these parts in here that aren't what I want. Take that out. It's a little bit up in here that has some green on it. Take that out. And then there's this big middle section in here. That I want to take out as well. So what I'm doing with the remove or subtract selection tools, I'm really just cutting holes in the selection. And let's get rid of this little bit of yellow right there as well. That really isn't appropriate for this technique. Okay, there we go. There's the initial selection. Up oh, a little bit right down here as well. That's yeah, okay. This will just take a second to get that little bit of green out of there. All right, there's the selection. Now, I always like to save selections if I've taken any time to do it. So, select, save selection, give it a name. I'll just call it flower. Choose OK, there's our saved selection. We'll be using that again, so it's a good idea to go ahead and save that. Now, let's just zoom out here. And if I can see the whole picture. And we're going to be reversing the selections so that only affects the background. So select invert. Now the whole background is selected and this one isn't. So this is now protected and this has been selected. Now we can convert this into a black and white image. So enhance, convert to black and white. And you can see there the red flower has been protected from the conversion process. Now it's just a matter of choosing which version you want to use. There's infrared, there's portrait, there's scenic landscape. Actually, it looks, up, looks pretty well here. I'll go ahead and I'll keep that scenic landscape. I think that's fine. Choose OK. And then we can deselect. So there's the first version taking a full color image and converting it into a color splash effect black and white by retaining part of the color image. Let's now see what you would do if this were a black and white image. So let's hide that. We'll make a new copy of our background layer and show that. We're now going to convert this to black and white. So enhance, convert to black and white, convert the whole thing. I'll leave the settings the same. There's our black and white image. Now, if you wanted to apply color onto something, you'd have to select around that object and make your selection. Now we already have our selection, of course, we don't have to redo that step. So let's just bring that back up again. Select, load selection, let's find that one. That was the flower, choose OK. There's our flower selection. Now we can apply color to this selection. A couple ways of doing this one, we can do a replace color and work with this. Once we have some color in there, you can actually shift things around. I'll show you how that's done. And we can add color by using the adjust hue saturation. This is the first step. Click on colorize and that gives us color in there. Now we can increase the saturation and we can adjust the hue to any color that we want. Looks like clear to the left hand side is fine. You can, you can adjust the lightness until you have, have it looking like the 
original flower. So there's our colorization. Let me just deselect that for a second. Deselect, and there you go. And you can you know tweak that around as you want. And that's applying color onto a pure black and white image. Let's reselect that, and I'll show you how you can modify that color. And that's up here. Enhance, adjust color, replace color. In here, notice that this has hue saturation. There's also lightness just off of our record area on the screen. Take the eyedropper, come in here and click into the image and choose the different settings you want and the different spots. As you click into the image you can add more into your selection. This, if you go too far it begins grabbing other things that you don't want. Let's do add And if we bring the fuzziness down, we can kind of prevent that background. Now it's only going to apply the color change inside of the selection anyway. It's just easier to see this if we have that fuzziness brought down. Okay, we're pretty close now. Let's kind of find the right area. I'm doing it just so that that whole area is selected again. Don't worry about the background that's not going to be touched because we have our selection. Down here I can now adjust my saturation. It's going to be applied only to that area and I can adjust the hue again. There we go. Just like if I was working on with the hue saturation. Now the nice thing about this is that I can now choose different areas. So I can make my you know my color shift like that. Choose OK. There's that color. Let's now do a secondary color on this. Let's go back, enhance, adjust color, replace color, and use the eyedropper tool. Let me click into the light spots here and let's add in a little make sure we have our good light spots selected. There we go. I'm only selecting part of this image, staying just on the light parts of the leaves. And let's adjust the saturation and the hue, you see there, of just the light parts. And that gives us kind of a posterized effect. So I have the darker areas I have red when we did the whole thing and I've now just selected out the lighter areas. We've given them a slightly different color giving us a posterized effect. Let's just deselect that. So there's kind of a posterization effect for the color using two steps on that replace color filter. So there you go. That is how to create your color splash effect. One working from a color photograph and one working from a black and white photograph. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.